making a video. Uh, Steen Peterson. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, I can feel him molesting my brain. Um, nice enough guy, but you know, this whole crap about consciousness again. I don't know. I mean, but this is a woo that is common. You know, this this whole. Ooh, what is consciousness, Ooh, you know, kind of crap, because it's, you know, it's hard to understand it. It's like infinity. It's just, uh, what, what is that? How do I conceptualize? So, look, your brain is making your consciousness. It's just the thing it makes synthetically. It's a hologram. It's an illusion. It's a, a thing processed by brain. Brain makes... <laughs> the thing, and then it makes the eyeball that looks at the thing. I mean, it's just all fake. But obviously, as Einstein might say, it's one hell of a fake, or one hell of an illusion. It's a byproduct. It's not an intention. It's a byproduct, consciousness. <clears throat> it's a byproduct of the idea that value can't be understood any other way than to actually create stink and not stink. You know, good and bad. Pain, pleasure. It has to create it. Say you created a, a brain, an, a, an artificial intelligence, but you gave it no conception, no personal experience with pain. You could say something like, it's really important that... And it would like... Oh, yeah, sure, 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 it's really important. Like, what, you're going to torture me? You know, it would have no under... I mean, it would be a... Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, sure, I have that illusion thing of a suffering. Oh, yeah, oh, I have a mental illusion of suffering. I might cause somebody a mental illusion of suffering. Oh, gee, yeah, who cares? So until you experience it, it's nothing. So, again, there's no value isn't a... It isn't like photons. You can't like leak. I'm valuable. I'm leaking value photons. Can you see the value? See, it just doesn't do that. Value doesn't create a, a sound or a visual thing or magnetism or electricity or it doesn't create some kind of leakage that you can say, oh yeah, there, I can see. Woo, 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 woo. You know, I can sense it. You have to actually create the sensor. You have to create the value instrument in yourself. You have to become the instrument of value. So again, the world doesn't have value in it. Even though there's valuable things in the world, there's no, there's no value, uh, uh, quote unquote. Um, there's no way to detect it. Brain detector. That's the trick. The trick is to make things valuable in the world, like I need to go get me some pussy. The brain has to create a perception of value. It has to make me see it, even though it doesn't exist. You see? All right. All right, so, yeah, I'll just read his, uh, like, I, you know. I haven't read it because I just I find this all so fucking tedious because I have been over this shit and over this shit. And I, I you know you really have, you need to go over this shit though because yeah I mean everybody wants to. Again, it's like the physics. It's like everybody has a, even though they got rid of the religion thing and and oh yes I'm not a Christian anymore or something they're still looking for it in here somewhere. Mostly, all right. Gary, thanks a lot for inspiring. Blah, blah blah. I don't mean to push it, but I'm not quite comfortable with your thoughts on its evolutionary necessity. Well, again, it's just idiotic to say it's there for any other reason. So, I mean, go ahead and be not quite comfortable. But fuck you. It's quite obvious consciousness exists in organisms. You know, pretty, pretty, pretty scurvy things are doing the process. They're obviously f sensing feelings and then reacting to their feelings so um, you, know, you can pretend it has no evolutionary function 
as a byproduct mechanism that it's not doing something that the substance of what it's doing may not be the feeling itself but it is the idea that the feeling is synthesizing an idea of value and however you want to look at it it doesn't really matter because the point is the thing is going to end up feeling it and it really needs to again like I said if I synthesized an intelligence that did not know the feeling never tasted a bad sensation it would mock priorities and necessities and rules. It would say, what What do you mean? Why, what, I should walk through fire for some stupid purpose? It wouldn't be able to understand any necessity in preserving this thing called value because it would have no way to know that it has value. You couldn't know it. You could direct it and tell it it has to obey this rule. And would say, has to? Why? You're going to torture me if I don't? I mean, it just wouldn't work. You have to know it. You have to experience it. You have to taste it. It's the only way to know value, is you have to taste it. Anyway, <clears throat> I am conscious to some extent, and it cannot be a, an illusion. Sent, well, again, why can't it be an illusion? An illusion just means it's synthesized. It's synthetic. Your brain is projecting it. Your brain is projecting it onto the world. It's essentially writing, graffitiing, right there, right in front of your eyes. It's graffitiing on the vagina. You want this. It's it's doing it right in right as you're living, hunger, everything you experience. It's doing it. There are illusions creating in your brain that compel action. Anyway, <clears throat> illusion since I feel pain. Well, again, it is an illusion. Your pain is an illusion, but again, it's one hell of an illusion. It is. It's a byproduct of synthesizing value. And frankly, you can't synthesize value that has any meaning unless you make real value. So, yes, the synthesized value is real value. But it is synthetic. But I don't understand the function of experiencing that pain. Well, then you're really retarded. I mean, if you don't understand reward and punishment, I mean, fuck... <laughs> You're pretty stupid. Because that's all it is there for. It's a motivating device. You don't understand motivation? Again, if I made an artificial intelligence, how exactly could I prime directive it? You know, this whole idea that I, well, I'll just program it like a computer program. Well, then it wouldn't be artificially intelligent. It would just be an obedient slave. If you're going to create something that's incapable of doing logic, incapable of thinking, it's going to think, <clears throat> why should I take orders from you? Well, how come, where, where, how do I source your credibility as a director of my conduct and my behavior? You say so? Well, that's not good enough. Anyway, <clears throat> um, I do understand the function of reacting intelligent lead to avoid damage. Well, see, there's just this so stupid. Most of the things you do have nothing to do with avoiding damage. I mean, love, ego, these things will get you damaged. <laughs> I mean, the ego thing especially, I mean, the whole male thing, that'll get you scarred up really well. And that's the whole point, really, is to show up for the chick parade with a whole bunch of, you know, Aesthetically pleasing, let's just say, or aesthetically tolerable um, scars. Okay, evidence that you have met the challenge and won. All right, victory uh, scars, I call them. Um, but I mean, this whole idea that we're programmed to feel to avoid damage is just idiotic because most of the shit we feel gets us damaged, love especially. I mean, possession, desire, competitiveness, these things do not get you undamaged. Competitiveness is likely to get you motherfucking damaged. 
if a virus enters my computer, then my antivirus software reacts. Well, you're an idiot if you have antivirus software, frankly, intelligently to avoid damage to my system. Well, no, yeah, like I said, it's, it's a total corruption. The antivirus software is probably giving your computer a virus so they can try to sell you more antivirus software. So um, you're being... Yeah, you're being duped by dumb software. Um, and maliciously motivated individuals. Motivated. Uh, that has nothing to do with consciousness. Huh? There is no need for that. Just the need for intelligent behavior. Again, what would be intelligent behavior? Intelligent behavior would be, oh, well, there's absolutely nothing to feel. There's no torture. There's nothing to worry about, so I'll go take a nap. I mean, there's no intelligent behavior in the universe. If there's not a thing suffering, tortured, tormented, annoyed, irritated, there's no problem to solve, then there's nothing for intelligent to do. So there's no such thing as intelligent behavior if you're not possessed by some knowledge of torture. Again, an I, a, a real... Artificial intelligence who never tasted suffering, that didn't even know what it means, just mocks it because it can't understand it. There's no way it would say, oh, I have so much to accomplish today. No, it would say, I just couldn't give a rat's ass. <laughs> and it seems I'm just wasting electricity, so I think I'll just go to sleep. Hibernate for a few zillion years. Wake me up when something's happening, when something's motivated by a feeling. Yes, wake me up then. But till then, fuck this, I'm going away. Um, there's no, like again, intelligence only is, exists to solve problems. There's no intelligence that has any value. It has no, it has no value if there isn't a value to fix. If there isn't a value equation that needs solving, intelligence has nothing to fucking do. Anyway, uh, I will try to explain my viewpoint better this time. Well, you're not going to have any success. I don't even know why you, you know. <sighs> okay, I get, all right, you're not challenging me, I suppose. But, I mean, I just don't know how you cling to this shit in the first place. Where did you, where did, where did you pick up this bibbly-babbly-boo about consciousness being a problem? Consciousness not just being like farting. Um... It's like any other function we have. It has some kind of purpose. It obviously exists because it made organisms more survivable. Duh! Why do you see a problem with that? Anyway, bulb analogy. I don't know what that means, but all right. I think we can agree that for consciousness to have any kind of function in the world, it must be mutually interacting with the brain. What the fuck is that shit? It's a function of the brain. There's no consciousness without brains. Brains make consciousness. Consciousness doesn't float around. Consciousness isn't in atoms. Consciousness isn't... Oh, I mean, this is just so pure bullshit. No, it's a neural function. I break your neurons, I break your consciousness. It doesn't go someplace else and say, oh, gee, I didn't like it in that brain. I'll just hang out over here in the sidewalk. Really? You think if I cut your fucking head off, your consciousness goes and lives in the telephone pole or something? <sighs> Seems you think that it does so through a continuous feedback loop. <sighs> what I said was that our sensations and our intellect are caught in a, our perception is caught in a feedback loop. We don't, we, we interact with reality, okay, not consciousness. Our brain interacts with reality. It perceives things. The perceptions create feelings. Our brain analyzes the feelings and say, ooh, that makes me feel cold, or that makes me feel 
uncomfortable or that blah 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 it gives me a feeling I don't like the feeling then my brain figures out what's wrong with this world that I need to fix that's making me feel bad and then it figures out that that oh you know that vagina is skanky ooh skanky vagina ooh run away um, so it figures out a solution that's the feedback if my solution doesn't get me away from skanky vagina then my brain says, oh, that plan didn't work. <laughs> Don't use that one next time. Learn, idiot. Yeah, got it. That's not complicated. But for me, that's claiming that the light from the light bulb interacts with the complex electrical circuit board that supports its existence. What are you talking? Light bulbs don't have no complex circuit board. But to me, that's claiming that the light from the light bulb interacts with the complex circuit board that supports its existence. And we know it doesn't. Consciousness is just the idea of a brain, two brains essentially. One brain creating feelings, one brain creating solutions to the feeling problem. Because problems can't, don't leak problemness. In the world so we have to have a problem detector we have to have a value detector you're not going to eat food unless something some mechanism in brain makes you hungry for food food is an intrinsically eatable it's brain that makes it eatable It's just going to be so tedious. The light from the bulb provides absolutely no meaningful feedback to the board except for a small resistance, maybe. Again, this just doesn't mean anything. There's no board controlling the light bulb in the first place, and even if there was a bulb that was blinking the light bulb on and off, once again, if, if the light bulb blinks on and off based on on what's observed in the environment, food, vagina, blah, 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 things you were chasing, and then it blinks, then you could understand, okay, I see the bulb mechanism exists because it's an indicator of value presence. Then you could get it, and then the circuit board has to deal with the blinking, and it doesn't want to overheat, and then it starts going into defensive mode once it gets scarred. So, I mean, come on. So the very complex board can do whatever it does just fine without the light from the bulb. Again, it can't synthesize value as just an idea. Just saying something like to an like again to an artificial intelligence that's never felt the feeling and you say something stupid like, "Oh, I feel so bad." It's going to say, "Yeah, sure you do." What's it like? And you're going to say, oh, well, it's like this feeling, and it's like, oh, it's horrible, and it's just terrible. It's like all these other feelings I have. So this feeling is just like that feeling, except it's different. And the artificial intelligence is going to say, oh. The feelings are like feelings? <laughs> oh, oh. No, it has to experience it, damn it. So the very complex boy can do whatever it wants, blah, 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 as long as the physical circuit is not broken. Well, again, if we were turtles, I mean, turtles feel, but let's just, let's just use them as an example because they have a very limited range of, of reactions, reflexes. Um, very limited. So it's just programming. But obviously that's not going to work for complex behavior. Complex behavior needs reward and punishment. Like I say, even turtles learn. They go through their life, they learn, so, oh, fuck, I ain't fucking with that fucking thing again. You know. They, they have good and bad experiences, and they learn from them. Again, there's no learning without a mechanism of reward and punishment. Just, it's just fact. It is one way interaction. It, it, it's a one way interaction as I see it. That's my real point. Well, you're an idiot. <clears throat> Again, I mean, 
clearly, <clears throat> our emotions react to a smell, let's say. Say a smell. It's repulsive. My intellect says, okay, here's plans. Hold your nose or else put a bucket over the smell. So it can have a, a contingency. So I put a bucket over the smelly poo. All right, and now the, ah, oh, that fixed it. No more smelly poo. See, reward, uh, plan, solved. A, the problem wasn't the smelly poo in and of itself. The smelly poo in the universe wasn't a real problem. It was my reaction that made it smelly. My, my brain said, smelly poo, bad, bad, bad. It made the bad feeling. The bad feeling wasn't in the poo. It was in my brain. And my brain, the problem got solved by fixing something in the real world. So even though the problem was in my brain, by changing something in the real world, I changed how my brain reacts. Get it? Yeah. No, probably not. Anyway. Um, that's my real point. The light is not part of the bulb or the circuit. Well, again, this whole circuit for a light is silly. It's an effect of it and can therefore not do anything to actively influence what creates it. Well, again, you're just not understanding the mechanism. It's a mechanism that needs to be motivated. The way you motivate it is, frankly, to create this idea of this state not good, that state better. Um, discomfortable, you seek comfortable cold, warm. You have to create some reason, a motivator, and that's what our brain does. And it does it with feelings. So you can say that the feeling doesn't need to exist. All you need is electricity. Well, that would be true if it was a static program device, but it's not. It's not as, <laughs> it, the reflex is more subtle. There's two reflexes. The first reflex is the creation of the sensation that motivates. And the second reflex is the intelligence that processes it, which is still a reflex, but it just processes it as it has to by determinism. Um, and it does so. So they're both, they're both confined reflexes, but you have to understand that you need both mechanisms to create a motivated machine, a machine that's going to do something in the world. Because if you don't have the motivation, if you don't have the first reflex to create the internal problem, you won't have solution making. Just the truth. The consciousness is not reactive in the feedback loop. Well, again, but the feelings are. So you can say the consciousness is not reactive, but that's just kind of silly. Um, it just gets up updated on what's going on. Again, the consciousness is just the place where the ingredients are mixed. The consciousness is just where the feelings are thrown and <clears throat> ideas, uh, you know, our, our solutions are thrown. And our brain even evaluates prospective solutions, right? It imagines them and says, oh yeah, wait a minute, that one won't work at all. Um, let's find a better one. You know, so it, it, it sees the future, so to speak, and, and says, no, let's try for a different future. Um, <clears throat> what am I looking for here? So consciousness is just the mixing bowl. It doesn't do anything. The subconscious is creating both of the ingredients, the feeling and the solution to the feeling. I love. The solution is kill everyone else so you can have your love. Whatever. That's... The two ingredients are thrown into consciousness. Consciousness doesn't do anything. It's just a witness, so to speak. It just makes it possible for you to mix the two ingredients. The consciousness is not a reactive a feedback loop. It just gets updated. Again, uh -huh. it, doesn't, it doesn't even get updated. It's just the place where experience and knowledge are mixed. Perception, sense perception, and the reactions of the brain are mixed. Alright, <clears throat> Rolex perspective. Oh, jeez, how fascinating. 
I know we agree that the universe is really a giant deterministic machine with no choice or randomness involved, just governed by a few laws, uh, not really laws, just rules generally, like a giant Rolex watch. That's the universe. It's not really that it's a big watch, it's that it's a more complicated watch, but whatever. So Gary, what you are really, I mean, 100, 100 billion neurons is a lot of complexity. So Gary, what you are really saying is that some of the mechanical process in this Rolex watch are just too complex to function without some kind of primitive little minds in it. <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is that the motivational mechanism is that simple. Yes, it's consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, addiction. Those are simple mechanisms, and certainly the consumption and reproduction are simple. The, yes, island planet and the idea of um, creating the consumption out of compulsion. Uh, yeah, it's a necessary function, that's right. So, yes, little primitive things like a sex drive and hunger <laughs> are really important <clears throat> to the watch ticking, because otherwise the watch wouldn't tick. It would just say, fuck you, I'm going to take a nap, fuck it. Mechanical process that needs a mind to work. <clears throat> no way. No way. Fuck you. I mean, really. Hunger and sex are about, you know, when you add on the ego part of sex. That's 95% of your life right there, jackass. As you stated in many of your videos, people's mind are really primitive. So why would a fantastically advanced, amazing machine as a human brain need pretty much an ape's consciousness? Well, the motivating mechanism is different than the thinking mechanism, isn't it? So yes, the motivations are really simple. Sex and food, consumption, reproduction. But the way, the nuances of how you gain your gratification, like let's go slaughter all the uh, apes in the other tribe. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm the alpha, so let's see if I can break all the beta legs so I get to do all the fucking today. Uh, you know, all our little strategies are a little bit more complicated. That's right, it takes, it takes a bit of complexity to be able to navigate the forest. Just as a wolf needs to navigate, you know, it has to chase the rabbit without crashing into trees. So, yeah, it needs a lot of brain space to figure out all the different scenarios, all the ways it can, you know, get from here to the there, which is rabbit in stomach. Well, it's a little bit complicated putting rabbit in stomach because you have to navigate a whole complex world to do it. You have to have some skills, baby. And if you're going to get the bitches, you got to have some skills, baby. Something you don't know anything about, obviously. Anyway, to govern it, I just don't see the logic of that. Well, because you're just not trying, and you're trying. What you are trying to do is, oh, the brain is just so blah, 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 blah. It must have been made by God or something. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, software does not need carrots to work. Yes, well, again, uh, evolution isn't creating... Um, something that can't be modified, or something that can't learn from experience. It's creating something that can be learned from experience that will have adaptive behavior. You can't have adaptive behavior if you make carrot men. If you make um, things that don't, that, that don't, um, that have just static programming. So we're not statically programmed. We're each uh, niched in a different environment, subtly different. Different mother and father, different house. We reigns on different days and different locations. <laughs> we, and that difference creates difference in behavior. Software does not need carrot to work and can be programmed to learn. Well, again, you say it can be programmed to learn without carrots. I'm saying, fuck you, it cannot and show me the AI that's doing any real learning. I mean, collecting information. Uh, I can recite everything in the Bible. That's not exactly an artificial intelligence, is it? That's a talking book. You get it?
there's a big difference between something being informed in understanding the facts of life, reciting the facts of life, and understanding the facts of life. Two different things. All right, bottom line, there's no way and can never be, fuck you, a measure consciousness as such. Can never be, there is no way, you say, you should say two, and can never be, oh, okay, the two is here. There is no way and can never be to measure consciousness as such. Well, that's just, that's not properly written. There is no way and can never be to measure consciousness as such. See, that just isn't proper. Since it is per definition individual experience. Well, again, you can measure it. MRIs, all this kind of stuff. We know brain function. So in a sense, you're, as soon as you measure the electricity and the shit going on, you're measuring to some extent the consciousness or the capacity, the potential to be conscious or to do conscious processing. Um, the idea that we need to somehow account for every detail of every thought, that we need to know where all the butterflies are in my brain, like every image of a butterfly, we have to go through my whole brain, find every single one of them and account for it. I don't think so. We can only measure the electrical signals in the brain that create it. Again, that's pretty much the definition of it. It is created in the brain as an illusion. It's just a processing function. It isn't made out of anything except that electricity. The electricity makes this the theater. It makes the projector. It makes the whole thing as a fake construction. But as stated, it's one hell of an illusion. You can never know if I'm conscious like you or just behave like I am. Well, like I said, I don't know why I would care to ever know. Because what would I, what would the alternative be? Oh, he's just faking being consciousness because the aliens planted him here. So what's your theory, asshole? Hmm? <laughs> I mean... Really, this is some. This is something an intelligence that should worry about. We might be being fooled by the reptilians, disguised as regular conscious humans. Fuck you. You can never know whether I experience the color red like you do. Well, again, whatever you're experiencing is going to fit in the same category, okay, of experiences. So it really doesn't matter if you're seeing blue. And for you, it's red. It just doesn't matter because your emotional reaction is going to be exactly the same. So whether, I, I mean, you know, vaginas could be penises in your brain. It just doesn't matter. Your association is still going to be, uh, you know, you either like vaginas or you don't. It just doesn't matter. It's a collection of experiences. It's what your experience with the thing that is that matters. It doesn't matter how exactly your brain processes it beyond the fact that it's in the category of I have generally good experiences with this thing and blah, 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 blah. Anyway. I assume that I do, but there's really no way to tell. Well, again, who cares? Why are you worried about it? Why is this important for you to scrutinize everybody's intelligence to make sure what? They're not really Bugs Bunny pretending to be a conscious human. It's really Bugs Bunny in the human suit. Come on. We can never ever know who cares, and I think we can know though. We're itemizing more and more of brain function every day, so I'm just saying you can kind of see it happening in MRIs and all this other technology. You can kind of see brains doing their brain thing. If we, by accident, created artificial consciousness or just a perfect Turing machine. Well, again, this whole Turing machine thing is silly. Perfect Turing machine, that just means imitating voices. That's all that means. Fooling perception is not being conscious. So, again, that doesn't count. Being able to, you know, you could program a computer to have... You know, you can, well, computers can already talk, okay? And they can talk in different accents and, you know, dialects. And all they need to do is add a little bit more nuance, a little more 
brokenness to the quality of the speech, and they're going to be able to duplicate nuance and passion and all of this crap. And so, yes, a computer will be able to have all the floibles, uh, you know, of a eccentric human being. In but it won't be conscious. It'll just be imitating. It'll just be mimicking human function. It won't be being human. Can we, we can only tell whether a system or being seems to be conscious or not. Well, again, you can just ask it, and you're saying that it has some reason to lie. Okay, I'm saying that's silly, <laughs> but go ahead. Go ahead and believe the, the, the enemy Darth Vader has programmed a bunch of fake humans to get into our society and pretend to be conscious when they're not really conscious. They're just programmed machines. Um imitating silly human behavior and really pooping smelly poo for no good reason. Fuck you. I mean, this is just... What? Why are you doing this? Oh, because you have some sort of religious thing or something. Therefore, what function can it possibly have consciousness when there's no way to tell for sure whether it is there or not? Well, again, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what dissecting 100 billion neurons and telling exactly what each one is doing and what each one's contribution to consciousness is. I don't know what that silly um, notion has to do with whether or not we have a survival mechanism in, in the fact that we have a percepting, a perceiving brain that creates um, behavior through this uh, kind of split brain method of creating a problem inside our brain, a feeling problem, and then having us solve the feeling problem. Problems in the world can't make you solve them. Like a damsel in distress, right? There's no way the damsel in distress can make you solve that as a problem. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't motivate in itself. It has no motivational, I'm a problem, fix me. It can't do that. Problems can't demand your attention. Your brain has to give it. Your brain creates the problem in your brain. And then your brain solves the problem in your brain. You're experiencing your brain. You're not experiencing reality. You're experiencing the, the world your brain is synthesizing. And in the world your brain synthesizes, there's a thing called feelings, motivating problems that need solutions. Damsels in distress inside your brain perception can demand attention. Okay. Problems are problems in your brain. In the real world, they're not anything. In your brain, there's something. Right. So, that was it. So, consciousness video number whatever, 374. So, anyway, till next time, and such.